Stadium. The soccer match this evening features the Big Macs of Cannon McMillan High School and the Panthers of Upper St. Clair. Now announcing the starting lineup for Cannon McMillan High School. At midfield, number nine, senior captain Vinny Centaur. At forward, number 20, senior captain Chris Lewis Kwiatkowski. At midfield, a senior, number two, Cody Russler. At forward, a senior, number 11, Justin Williams. At defender, a junior, number five, Alec Brumbaugh. At defender, a junior, number 12, Eddie Hartman. In goal, junior, James Hathaway. At midfield, a junior, number four, Nate Jacob. At forward, a junior, number 28, Nick Oberhoff. At midfield, a sophomore, number 26, Corey McCurdy. And at defender, a sophomore, number 15, Ivan yeah, Viveros. That's, that's what he wound up doing. Really good. Yeah. The Cannon McMillan Big Macs are coached by Larry Finger, who is assisted by Jason Masco, Frank Zuzek, Joe Bates, and Bob Straw. That was fun. And now, the starting lineup for your Panthers of Upper St. Clair High School. Great school. At defender, a senior, number eight, Matt Kiernan. Yeah, Brendan McAllister came from our basketball program. At forward, a senior, number seven, Stephen Mackey. At defender, a senior, number 16, Dom Pizone. At midfield, num uh, number 10, senior captain Mike Worthy. At defender, a junior, number four, Wes Burdett. In goal, junior Joe Conlon. At midfield, a junior, number six, Ethan Dicer. At midfield, a junior, number five, Kevin Muck. At midfield, a sophomore, number 13, Joe Hart. At midfield, a sophomore, number 12, Troy Kiernan. And at defender, a freshman, number 19, Hayden Bernhardt. The Upper St. Clair Panthers are coached by Uma Schneider, who is assisted by Kevin Kaufman and Ryan Schwobel. The officials for this evening's match are Andy Mannion, Frank Pollock, and Ron Karras. I'm Brett Davis here with Gavin Williams, the voice of the Upper St. Clair Boys Soccer Panther. Gavin, how many years has this been for you? Um, I think my first year was 2004, the first state championship year, at least on and off, um, thanks to uh, uh, the Dilly family and the Convoy family. Uh, they asked me to do it because I was coaching their kids in basketball, and uh, they knew I was trained in this, <laughs> doing this for several years professionally, and so they kind of asked me to come aboard, and I, I really loved it ever since I, I played soccer my whole life. Well, it's been a pleasure for me. I've been listening to you for years, and uh, as I said, it's a pleasure for me to sit, uh, sit next to you and call the games here this season. So likewise, I'm, likewise. I'm looking forward to it. Well, the Panthers come into this game with the one win and two ties. This is the second home game of the season. Last game, last home game, they uh, tied 51-1. And quite frankly, and in typical St. Clair fashion, a game they controlled, uh, had a heck of a lot of possession through the course of the game. Uh, and not surprisingly, as it seems to be, found themselves down one nothing <laughs> as soon as the second half got started. But uh, fought their way back and were able to tie it up 1-1. Uh, and that's the way it ended after two overtime periods. Well, one thing we've talked about, I think it's been a recurring theme for the past couple of years with Upper St. Clair soccer is they play a great possession game. They really do possess the ball. They're very active. It's that last touch that's been, you know, an issue. They have not had a real, you know, dynamite scorer or striker, and so you really have to be better on your service. And, you know, it's been uneven the past couple of years. It, it's good to see. I've, I know Stephen Mackey's been on the board a lot early, and, and it's good to see him stepping up as a senior and scoring a lot of goals. Yeah, I think uh, he scored uh, in each of the games so far, okay, uh, at Mooney, at uh, Kiskey, and also uh, at Moon. So uh, he's on a good streak, and um, hopefully he can get uh, uh, some additional support um, as we move through the course of the season. Second section, second section game for the Panthers, 1-0 uh, in the section right now, and this is where it counts, obviously. you got to win these section <coughs> games. The first three teams in the section move on to the playoffs, uh, and that's obviously... Uh, the starting goal uh, for the Panthers uh, this year and, and every year. This is a heck of a start so far. Really strong uh, possession game early on. They've 
uh, sort of made a couple good interior passes, but here's a, a, a steal. And Cannon Mack traditionally tries to play a little bit more direct than St. Clair. They don't possess as much, maybe play a little bit more long ball. And uh, it's a dangerous style. You have to make sure you really keep your back line on your toes and, uh, and, and either forward or at least on the same line, try to draw them off sides and such. Yeah, I'm not sure where Canamac's going to be this year. I felt last year they had, a, 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 quite frankly, a strong team. They come in, in this game with, with two wins and, and three losses, you know, beat the team that they should beat. Uh, and, um, you know, unfortunately for them, uh, came, have come away with three losses this early in the season. But in talking with their coaches uh, before the game, um, they're optimistic, definitely optimistic. It's a new coach, Larry Fingers. It's his first year here with uh, Cannon Mack. He comes over from uh, Carlington, I believe. Um, so, you know, it's a learning process for these, uh, for these kids, for the big Mac, okay, trying to get a handle on what uh, Coach Fingers likes to do, what he, how he likes them to play, wants them to play. Uh, and everything that goes along uh, with that. It's tough for the seniors particularly because they've been doing it a particular way for a number of years, and uh, you know now, now they got to tow, uh, tow coaches' line. That's absolutely an adjustment. Here's a little good one-two ball worthy to the outside. Looks like Stephen Mackey trying to run onto it. It's going to be a Panther. Now I deflected off Stephen Mackey, and it will be a, a Big Mac throw. Why don't we set the lineup for you here uh, before too long? We have Joe Conlon in goal. He is a junior. And on the back line, we have Wes Burdett. It looks like a, a flat back three is what it looks like we're playing. Here comes Cannon Mack uh, trying to counter of Wes Burdett, number four. He's a junior. We have Hayden Bernhardt, a freshman in the center back. And I believe that's Don Pizzone, number 16, there battling. He is a senior. Uh, in the midfield, that's Mike Worthy. No, he's wearing the 10 jersey, uh, battling in the center mid there, along with who else we have there. Number 12, that's Troy Kiernan. He is a sophomore. And then on the wide side here, we have number 13. That's another sophomore, Joel Hart. And who is that on the, the far right? Can you tell? That may be Ethan Dicer. I can't tell from this, uh, this distance, but I think that's who it is. I do think that. That's number six, Ethan Dicer. He has great pace up the wing. Uh, it was really a good change of pace last year when used. And up front here, we got the two front runners. That is Stephen Mackey, number seven. He is the Panthers' leading goal scorer at this point, and he's going to be probably the target guy up front for much of the uh, afternoon. Yeah, they opened up uh, at least the last home game in a 4-2-3-1, and um, I suspect they'll run the same thing uh, today, uh, just basically working off of uh, Mackey up top, which is a different position for him. I mean, Steven's been a defender, you know, since his freshman year. Uh, I think he even plays uh, defense uh, with his academy team with the uh, Cleveland International. So, you know, it's... Uh, uh, quite frankly, two things. Speaks very highly of Steven as far as his technical ability and, and understanding the game to be able to play a completely different position. And uh, from a negative standpoint, it may point to a little bit of a gap that we have as a team uh, that you alluded to, uh, to earlier. Oh, the good news about uh, that transition for Stephen Mackey is it is the exact same transition his brother Andrew Mackey made, who was the, st uh, the star striker on the second he played on both and was a, a high, high contributor on both of the state championship teams in 04 and 05. Um, but his second year, he was the main striker up front. He was a defender on his Beedling team and played defense in Penn State. And uh, he made the transition well. Now we've got a, an injured Panther. I didn't see a clock. I think maybe West for that. I don't know if he just uh, went down hard or if he uh, twisted a uh, knee or something as he gone down. But he's up uh, shaking it off. Well, you don't want to see that early on. Wes has uh, been a couple-year starter at, at, on that back line. He kind of keeps them organized, and he is a real, real strong, solid defender back there. He's, he's a guy who you can lean on. He's very mature, and he's very calm in his decision-making. He will be the guy to get him organized back there. Well, we're about five minutes in at this point in time. Still 0-0, zero, zero, and um, kind of played in between the 18s at this point in time. Fox stop. Fox stop. So they call for a clock to be stopped here. Which you want. I'm not sure. Gotcha. We're going to do a little clock reset here. 35 37. So they're going to put about uh, 40 seconds back on the clock. They really didn't give us a clear clock stop signal, but that's why they have, that's why they have it on the field for us, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, Ed Callahan doing the Lord's work up here again. Good work, Mr. Cal. All right, we trigger it back in. Here come the Panthers on the uh, attack again. Playing there. They like to play from the ground. They like to possess. Ken and Mack clogging it up in the midfield. That's a nice little ball. This is Kevin Muck. 
tried to play a little through ball to Mack. He couldn't quite get it there. And Cannon Mack trying to counter up the wing. Nice little pass. That's a good little possession. That's a good job by Bernhardt, the freshman, stepping up and disrupting it. Cannon Mack with a quick restart here. I like the numbers around the ball here for the Panthers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, particularly early on, just how many guys Cannon Mack throws forward uh, in an attacking mode. Um, you'd have to think initially, at least, St. Clair's going to be a little bit more technically proficient than, uh, than the Big Macs are, but uh, it doesn't look like that early, so... Yeah, a lot of times the road team and e even the underdog team come out in a little more of a, a defensive, passive mode, kind of let the game come to them, absolutely. Nice, nice little ball from Pizzone. Ah, uh, Kiernan did not see the defender, although he's going to draw a foul anyway. That was a good, strong play on the ball by Matt Kiernan. Yeah, and in that situation, you know, two things there. You, you want the player receiving the ball to, to get his head on the swivel and look around, but, you know, there's 10 other guys on the field, too, that should be telling them that somebody's coming hard from the back side. Yeah, these are the things you want ironed out before section play starts. So, yeah. unfortunately, they've sort of limited the number of games now in the Whippeal, so you don't have a whole lot of tests before uh, section play starts. And, you know, the Panthers, uh, in, a, in, in a perennially challenging section, you, you don't have many nights off. Yeah, no question. Now, Ken and Max played uh, Peters earlier in the week. They typically play, play Peters very hard uh, and tight, and they lost that game 2-1. to one. But uh, talking with the coaches, they were pleased with the performance. Kevin Muck with a nice outlet ball here to Joel Hart out on the flank. We'll see what we can put together in the final third. And that's where we've been struggling, quite frankly, is getting good, solid chances in the final third. And then when we do, it's a matter of actually finishing them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, it, 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 Mike's – kind of playing a different position. He's playing in a little more of an offensive role this year. He's been a, a central defender. He's been a defensive midfielder. Now he's kind of stepping in that role as the, the, the creator, the number 10 in, in the offensive midfield. And that's a, I mean, granted, he is a point guard on the basketball team. He has good vision. He's a distributor. But that is a, that's a change. I mean, it's, it's a, uh-oh, dangerous through ball. We got a goal. Boy, it went just right through the box, and nobody touched it. It looked like two Panthers had a chance to get – get a, a foot on it and didn't. It's the guy in the, the white long sleeve shirt there. I can't tell. It looks like maybe number number 20 it looks like, and that is that is Chris Lewis Kwiatkowski. That's a... a... Cannon back goal scored by Chris Lewis Kwiatkowski. Boy, I'll tell you what. That, that was troubling on a couple different reasons. One, it was the first you know possession they've had all night. Two, it was a low, um, sort of innocuous ball right through the box, and the Panthers just kind of stood there, and he tapped in the garbage on the far post. one nothing, Big Max. Yeah, and a good job of Canamac basically jumping on the opportunity. Uh, they have been aggressive here early on, and uh, that obviously continues over in their uh, challenging and pursuit of the ball in the box. Well, if anything will wake you up, uh, surrendering an early goal to the, uh, to the visiting team will do it, and Let's hope the Panthers can wake up a little bit. Here we go. Ball center in the middle. It's loose. Mackey's trying to run onto it. That should be a corner, I think. No, they're going to call that a goal kick. Uh, yeah, I thought he hit it off the defender. He didn't, and yeah. it will be a goal kick. Yeah, it looked like Stephen got a little surprised with that ball following, following through. Um, caught him off guard a little bit and got by him, unfortunately. Yeah, I think he was expecting a ball maybe uh, you know, more – wide, you know, kind of the flag, and the ball was played sort of the far post. Right. That's a nice touch right there. We got a little space here. That's Joel Hart out on the flank. He's a new face to some of you Panther fans, only a sophomore in the lineup here. Yeah, he and uh, uh, Troy Kiernan uh, both play for uh, Arsenal. Uh, they'll be on the uh, U16 team next year at the two- or three-time uh, defending state cup. Uh, champion squad that they have at that age group, and uh, you'll if you watch enough games here, you'll be able to see some of the uh, quality play that have come out of both Troy and Joel through the course of the year. Now, one of the reasons soccer in Western Pennsylvania is so much better than it was when I was here is because of the proliferation of the club teams. There are so many more club teams. There are so many more quality club teams that. You just have more soccer players, you have more talent, and that's exactly what you're seeing. The depth, there are a lot more better teams and, and a lot more better players. Right. Now, Canamax played two guys up top, um, and obviously uh, 
stand up. Absolutely no hesitation to put our backs under pressure. And we're going to have to watch that. We're going to have to watch that. It's one thing to be composed on the ball. It's another be, to be a little lazy, you know, in trying to get the ball out quick. And we uh, going to watch that, make sure our guys don't get stuck uh, and forced into a uh, uh, troubling turnover. Absolutely, especially with only three back. Uh, you know, we've played a flat back four um, for a couple years now. Primarily, this is a little bit of a, a shift. It was a nice little run by Matt Kiernan, but he got poked. Uh, he got clipped there. He's down holding his foot. Oh, that's Troy Kiernan. He made a nice little run there, uh, kind of from, from a, a more defensive midfield posture. Slipped through, and it looked like he got clipped. I think the ref just called advantage because he was continuing, but uh, he obviously got it pretty good. Looks like either in the bottom of his ankle or the top of his foot, and he, he's in some pain. Yeah. Looks like we're going to have our first Panther sub of the evening, and it is senior Jesse Poljack. And I think Jesse's uh, just coming off of an injury. I don't know if he played earlier in the week, but I know he had been out for a little while. So it's good to see uh, uh, an experienced quality player, you know, Jesse's caliber back on the field. I actually talked to Jesse earlier in the week, and he said uh, that, yes, he was, he was banged up, but he was ready to go. He said he thought he was going to play Tuesday, so... He trained with us some over the summer at our boot camps, and uh, Jesse's a hard worker, great kid. So it's going to be Burdett putting the ball in play here. And this is a dangerous spot here. This is a nice, deep position to have a free kick here. And it's a set piece from Burdett. That's a really tough flick. To Kevin Muck did get his head on it, tried to flick it back, maybe to, to a teammate. But yeah, Wes probably would like to get another shot at that. Okay, he's got to get that ball a little bit deeper and driven a little bit harder uh, on that. That's going to be an interesting dynamic in terms of, uh, you know, some of the set pieces, who, who takes the set pieces and such. Um, you know, they've had a couple guys who've been very dynamic in that spot over the past couple of years, and now it'll be interesting. Dave Steen was a very good one. Right. Um, Jimmy was a, a – Belak was a very good one. And so it'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out as the year progresses. Yeah, and, and Jimmy just had an uncanny ability to play well in the air. I mean, he was just an excellent aerial player. Um, we've got a couple guys here uh, that are good in the air. Um, we've got to get them good service. I know Robbie Mertz took a lot of the corners uh, last game against uh, uh, Kitsky. Okay. In fact, I wasn't too sure. That's a hard shot. Oh, right on. he spilled on it too. Game. Yeah, right to the keeper. And, uh, yeah, a little, little case of the bobbles there. One thing I liked that Mike Worthy did there was he's been giving it up a little bit quick before anybody's kind of come to him out of the midfield. He carried it a little bit longer there. Um, got a shot on Cage, which I liked. But more importantly, uh, if the defense isn't going to respect the guy with the ball, you've got to take some guys on occasionally. Mike did. He was a little more direct there, and I, I liked the approach. Yeah, they, um, you know, a couple games that I've seen so far, you're getting, you, you've got those lanes. You've got those dribbling lanes that you can go through, guys coming from a, from a deeper position. And uh, you're right, sometimes you sit there and wonder why the heck doesn't, don't they take it, okay? They're so quick to get rid of the ball, they want to play quick, they want to play fast. But um, there may be a better option for them out there. The ball is harmlessly back to Conlon. Joe's been aggressive off his line tonight. He's uh, looked very assertive. N nothing he could have done about the goal, so. All right, nice little touch there by Mock. There's Worthy, he's got some space. He's carrying. Showing some patience, now touches wide. We're going to drop it back here from Dysart. Trying to play a little one-two. That was a really late challenge, and it was, it was definitely called. Right. They've been a little chippy in terms of being a little late on the challenges, and uh, the ref's going to, going to nip that in the bud here quick. Yeah, good job by the referee. I mean, these, these are easy calls, but uh, you know, at times these guys keep their uh, whistles in their pockets and, and consequently lose control of the game. But... The refs have been on here. Good battle from, oh, that's very nice possession from Mackey. Touch in the middle. Poljack touches it back. Oh, sort of a bad break. Muck looked like he had, oh boy. Muck looked like he had a pretty good strike there. It hit off the, sort of the back of uh, one of the Cannon Mack defenders who looked like he was trying to avoid it and uh, goes harmlessly. The goalie comes off his line to snag it. Yeah, and that's some nice play in the final third. I mean, Kevin comes from a deep position. The ball gets laid back to him. Uh, he's open. Unfortunately, there's just uh, one too many Canamax players in the shooting lane. 
Uh, but Stephen Mackey did a nice job of holding up the ball until guys could run on. He really did a good job of possessing. He's going to have to be a holding forward if there's only going to play one guy up top. Yeah, and you've seen the game's kind of settled here. Most of the control, at least, has been in uh, our offensive half and in the Cam Max end. And you would think that's what would be happening here as time goes by. The deep ball in the corner. One thing that'll be interesting to watch as this game, oh, and we got John Gertunka subbing in the game. He's a junior. He'll probably play up front or, or close to it, maybe in the mid. Um, one thing some of the kids were telling me this week was they thought when uh, they got behind against Kiski and they thought they were dominating play, they thought they got a little bit um, sort of out of sorts, got a little bit direct, a little too impatient, didn't continue to play their game. They did get an equalizer, but it'll be interesting to see if they try to you know, calm down. It's an early goal and play your game. Nice little step up by freshman Hayden Bernhard. Nice little overlapping run. This is Don Pizzone. He has good speed, as we know. He's going up from his left defensive spot. Pole Jack holding. Gertunka, he's looking for a service. Now, again, didn't quite get to where he was looking. Pole Jack, nice little win. He's battling. Ridden off, and uh, Cannon Mack looking to uh, go on the counter here. A little one-two in the mid. A lot of space. Nice step up. Couldn't quite keep it in, but that's a good way to break up the attack. I believe that was Matt Kiernan, and, and he did a, a really nice job because San the Panthers are not hesitating to push a lot of numbers forward yeah, here. No, not at all. I'm surprised, quite frankly, uh, that the Cannon Mack player would dribble the ball out of that position. I mean, they are... Typically a little bit more direct. Uh, you may want to go for a quick counter uh, and go over over top in that situation, but um, he chose just to dribble the ball out. And a good uh, Matt Kearney did a nice job stepping up and taking away the passing lane. Some of the Panther players are a little bit upset. Um, one of the Cannon Mac players sort of finished into Joe Conlon after he played the ball out of bounds, and they were looking for a, a foul there, but no such luck for the Panthers. This is a pretty deep throw, and I don't know if they're going to try to go the long route like a corner here. Nah, just straight up kind of harmless into the box. Oh, it's flicked back. It's not harmless at all. But Conlon, good job coming off his line yeah, to snag it. Up there, recognizes the danger and takes care of it. Now Panthers trying to play a little bit more direct there, but uh, harmlessly out of bounds. This will be a Big Mac throw. And we have 24 minutes to go in the first half. The Cannon Mac Big Macs. Lead our Panthers one to nothing in the early going here. Nice step. Good step by Kevin. Take that ball out one more here, Worthy. There you go. Yeah, he was a little, a little late. A little, little late, a little behind. Yeah, I mean, Cannon Mac, you can tell, is not really comfortable playing the possession game. That's not their style. Um, if they're going to go, they're going to go a little bit more direct, try to counter off the Panthers' mistakes. And, uh, you know, the Panthers are comfortable possessing the ball. That's a nice little touch through by Worthy. we got a lot of space here. Now, Jesse got – I think he got, maybe got his feet tangled. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a little foot tangle, maybe a little uh, nudge in the back. West shielded him nicely. I'm not quite sure why uh, they waited until St. Clair had the advantage and blew it, but same, same result here. Mike facilitating to Jesse. Looked like a handball. They didn't get it. Panther play it over here. Pizone has all the time he wants. Trying to get Stephen Mackey on a little run to the flag. Cannon Mack plays long ball again. Now Pizone. Gertunka. Gertunka tried to go down the wing, couldn't quite get it, and uh, it's still loose. The Panthers are possessing a lot in this area, but it's not very dangerous. No, no, I mean, um, and again, as you mentioned too early, it becomes a uh, test of your patience, okay? Um, never a lack of possession for us. It's just a question of how effective can we be in the final third.
Kenny Mack looks more than happy to sort of sit back, maintain their posture, and wait for the Panthers to, you know, try to make a move. This is a nice ball. That's a great ball. Oh. It's a nice driving ball, and I believe by Kevin Muck, John Vertonka doing a nice job getting his hand on the ball. <laughs> That's probably the most dangerous, uh, dangerous play of the game in terms of using the possession to set up some sort of attack, and that, that was a really nice ball. It was low, and it was driven, and Kurtunka had a, a pretty good opportunity to head it far post, didn't quite get the type of head he wanted on it, but that's the type of service in terms of quality you want to see. Right. Robbie Mertz here uh, is up, looking to get a substitute in. And uh, that is a stiff challenge. <laughs> it on the far side. Uh, but it will be a, a free kick for the Big Macs. And they're going to play short. Nice little give and go down the wing. And it's going to be another Big Mac throw there on the far side of the field. We have to watch ourselves a little bit uh, in, the, in the back as far as those physical challenges are concerned. Make sure we keep our arms in. Don't want to give even the illusion that we're giving a little chippy. Mm. They played a yeah, what a, what appeared to be a dangerous ball in the box. There was nobody running on the far post, so it wasn't a, a huge deal. But it went harmlessly through the goal box, and Panthers are going to key it back in. And here comes Robbie Mertz replacing Jesse Poljack. Uh, Robbie Mertz is is a newcomer to the program. He's a ninth grader, uh, the second ninth grader we've seen out there. So the future does look bright for Panther soccer. Yeah, we've got two. Uh... Two freshmen on the field right now for Upper St. Clair. Now worthy touches. Robbie Mertz with his first touch. Obviously, Robbie's not a big guy. He has great foot skills. And uh, as Brett alluded to earlier, he takes a lot of the set pieces, the corners and such. He was really dynamic. Uh-oh, there's a tough opportunity, but... Boy, he should have probably done better with that. He didn't have a great angle, but he didn't get much on it. And Joe Conlon, no problem. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was offside there. Oh, they, they. West will tell you he was offside uh, by a mile without any <laughs> problem whatsoever. As opposed to coach, I, I really wasn't covering the guy. I probably should have been covering. <laughs> yep. But uh, we'll defer to West, and uh, he's got the better view, so he made the right decision. That was a good step by Hayden Bernhardt. Robbie touches it outside. This is Gertunka. Got a little space. He's going to try to switch fields here. A delayed run. Ooh, nice running through it. It's Muck again. Coming through a little hole, but it goes without punishment. Not exactly sure where John was going with that ball. Yeah, I couldn't quite. Kevin was wide open in the middle of the field. Maybe he just got away from him. We probably saw him, but just uh, the ball just got away from him a little bit. We just let him a little too far. All right, Mertz touches wide out. This is a little bit more patient attack. Uh, Stephen Mackey is looking for somebody to run off him. He's holding up. Nice play by Muck. He's won a lot of balls in the mid already, and he does it again. Kevin Muck's really doing a nice job winning those 50-50 balls. Again, uh-oh, heads up. Got to stay back. That's that counter we've been talking about. It. Panthers got numbers back now. Good job by Bernhardt. Yeah, yeah that's, that's coming through strong with the ball. That's a, that's, a, that's a strong move by the freshman. I think uh, you know one of the things up front that we're seeing is the Panthers have got to do a better job of transitioning from defense to offense. I don't think they're doing it quite quick enough, and as a result, uh, Stephen Mackey's having to hold up, and, and, and he, he needs to have active runners off him. Yeah, no question. He's got maybe one option you know, upon receiving the ball, and um, there's a nice turn by Mackey, nice one-time turn. And it's a long shot. And unfortunately, as a forward, what happens if you're not getting that support, you find yourself moving deeper and deeper into the midfield and consequently taken away from what your responsibility is, which is stretching the field and giving the guy some options up top. So, you know, it's incumbent upon the midfielders uh, to provide him with support, provide him with good service. Because, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's just the way the strikers are. They'll start coming back in the midfield. Well, in keeping with our theme, we have our third freshman checking into the game here at, at right outside, and that is Garrett Blake, number 15. 
Yeah, Garrett played extremely well uh, against uh, Kiske um, last time we were here at, uh, at home and uh, expect him to play strong here tonight. Bernhardt again steps up. Mike can't quite control it, but he wins it back. Mertz touches wide. Very sure with his touch. Now we got a little bit of space here. Mock's going to carry. Playing to Mackey. It's exactly what you said. He's checked way back. He's all the way back to the 40. Funny how that happens, huh? Yeah, well, it's, hey, when I, whenever I say something, usually the direct opposite happens no, about no, five minutes on later. Now. Come on now. You've been watching enough of this stuff. Yeah, you know it does. You know what you're talking about. Doesn't help my prognostication <laughs> abilities. I wish. Now Wes is going to go forward a little bit aggressively. Uh-oh, heads up. He, he sort of misplayed it. Good job, Pizone. Oh, he blew a tire. Here comes Worthy. Yeah. That's oh, that's, that's great. That's a great ball. He's got to get there. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, that's, a, that's a wonderful through ball, beating a number of, beating a number of uh, defenders that way. Um, not sure if there was a little hesitation by the... Campers trying to get to that or what, but uh, that's a, that's a good ball. Yeah, Dysert got Dysert got there, but uh, a little late, and then the defender, Canada Max defender, to, to his credit, did a pretty good job of uh, closing him down. Him yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely him back. He knew he was in trouble. Boy, but that's that is the danger. We went, we did two things that we've talked about. The quality of service was excellent, and then the uh, transition from defense to offense, both top notch there. Ooh, a bevy of Panther yeah, subs here. Like, uh, Jesse Poljak going in up top. Joel Hart's probably going outside right wide. Um, Jonathan Erdman, I believe, uh, yeah. playing in the middle, actually. Uh, Muck, Mackey, and uh, Dysert out. So Erdman, who's a junior, this is his first appearance. He's in the number 14 jersey. Boy, a lot of room here, and Wes is going to take advantage of it, as he should. Make them uh, challenge you. You're not going to be able to wear the opposition down if you let them sit back. And uh, he, he was a little more direct in his attack. A little under 15 here. Still one nothing, Big Mac. Boy, that is a long throw. That's Garrett Blake, the freshman. We may have the next Matt McClintock in terms of being able to use throw-ins as a basically a de facto corner kick. The nice thing is we've got two guys that can do that between West Burdett and uh, Garrett Blake. And quite frankly, you know, it's, it's a, it's a uh, corner kick uh, with the distance these guys can throw the ball away. That is a bomb. Not only is it a corner kick, but frankly, I think it's a little easier to control if you've got a guy who can really do that. At this level, I think that's, there's a lot of value, especially if you have a really good target guy like we've had in Jimmy the you know, past couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, unfortunately, we had maybe one guy in the box to where he was going with that ball. you got to recognize that you can throw the ball that far and start training the goal. Absolutely. Guys in there. Yeah, you especially want a guy, you know, kind of, you're not allowed to obstruct or shadow or frame the goalie, but uh, you want to sort of indirectly do that. In other words, whatever you can get away with. <laughs> in the, hey, it, it's, granted, granted the, 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 the goaltenders are highly protected, as they should be, but... Uh, it, the box is a man's world. You know, you gotta, you, you gotta do some damage in there when you can. Canada Max throwing here. Coming up on 13 minutes left in the in the half. An enthusiastic crowd here at Panther Stadium. I'm not exactly sure where the maybe Canada Max cheers are coming from, but okay. Apparently from uh, Canamax JV, enthusiastic that their squad's up one nothing. Kurtanko with a little bit of fancy footwork. He's going for a far post ball. Not a bad ball. Little deep, but I like the idea. Yeah, knows what he wants to do with it. Uh, again, we just got uh, execution. You know, just just a little little bit off here or there, and uh, ball is collected easily by the goalkeeper. Now this is it's the quick ping one two. We've seen a ton of it tonight. 
Um, it, it, it is the one thing, you know, and it, you can dominate possession and lose in this game. There's no question about it, but it does give the impression that you are dominating the, the flow of play. And then the second thing it does, which is a little more underrated, I believe, is when the opposing team is chasing the entire time because you're possessing, you do wear down your opposition. Plus, I don't think Cannon Max made a sub tonight. Maybe. Not a bad little strike there from about the 20, 25 yard line of the football field, but it will go harmlessly wide to the left. And the Panthers will trigger it back in with a goal kick as Ethan Dysert returns, replacing John Gertunka. He will stay on the far left side now. Stephen Mack is up. And on cue, a can of Mack substitute steps to the line. As I said. Your prognostication powers? Very poor. Improving already. <laughs> Very poor. <laughs> Here's Arvin Eastgarian here. Tries to play a little through ball. Couldn't quite get it through. I mean, there's only one guy high at all, even on the Panther side of the field. Now the Panther, now the Panther uh, faithful is getting into it as well. Good number of students here uh, tonight, braving the first cold night of fall. Can't wait for them to break out one of those We Got Spirit. Yes, we do. We Got Spirit. How about you? That is, that is old school. That was, that was still, around, uh, still around a little bit in the 90s when I was there, but it, it was tapering off at that point. A little talking to. Can't Mac player. They've been, they've been a little chippy. It hasn't been bad, and I think the officials have done a nice job in terms of keeping it under control, but they've been late. Yeah, I mean, obviously they want to let the St. Clair know that they're going to be there every time uh, we get the ball. This is a nice, nice ball. ball. Top, Dyser. He headed out. This should be a corner kick, and let's see what we can do here. And it is going to be Robbie Mertz as the Big Macs are subbing now. I, I will say this. This is the first Panther uh, corner kick of the night and their second kind of dangerous set piece. Um, I watched Robbie Mertz take a several of these against uh, Fox Chapel in the scrimmage, and he was really good in terms of his ball control and placement. Ball is up in the box, headed out. A scramble for it. The placement was pretty good. We didn't really challenge it like you'd like. It's still not out. It's sort of played up in the air. Now up in the air again. Mike tries to win it with his head. Now, now we clear it out. Garrett Blake. He'll be throwing for Big Mac. Coming up to the nine-minute mark here in the first half. Still one nothing. Can Mac. Mackey waiting for support. He does. Now drops it back. See, look at all the space here in the midfield. They're, they're sucking back, sucking back. Worthy to Mackey. Mike's making a run. He's going to try to find him back. Mike couldn't quite touch that by the last defender. And Garrett Blake's going to come up and take this. This will be really your first example where it is clear that he, they can go direct here. Yeah, we've got to get some guys in the box here. Wow. wow. Oh, Mark's got a head on. He couldn't quite head it down. Boy, the smallest guy on the field. That is inexcusable. It is. If I'm a Canada coach, that is inexcusable. I mean, he was unmarked, and he was wide open, and he's the smallest guy in the field, and he's the one getting his head on it. And Robbie, who has great skills, as we've mentioned, he's going to be disappointed that he didn't put that down. Yeah, interesting. The last game against Kitsky, we were commenting that we, we were not putting players on the goalkeeper. Okay? Robbie uses his head, puts himself on the goalkeeper, and guess who gets his head on the ball? I'm a big believer in that. A big believer. Maybe it's because it was my, my role. And I love the 50-50 balls. I love the box stuff. But I just think it's incredible. Because if you have the keeper worried about something other than where the ball is, exactly. it's an advantage. It's disruptive. Plain and simple. You know? and, and you've got to be disruptive to get an advantage. There's a sl sloppy giveaway there. Still working hard to get it back, and that's and, and that's good to see. Okay, um, you're going to make bad passes through the course of the game, and, and the rule of thumb is, you know, uh, you lose the ball, you you get it back. Go get it back. Go get it back, and Joel did a nice job there. Wow. 
That was, that, that was actually pretty egregious. Here's Stephen Mackey. Again, he's checking way back. I mean, he's back on his own side of the field now. That's not, that's not, what we, that's not really what we need at all. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Messrs. Schwabel and Schneider will discuss that tactical part of the game. Yeah, and, and, and it is exactly what you mentioned, though. It's him getting frustrated. He's not getting service where he wants the ball, and he's not getting help to run on, so he's checking back. I mean, it's exactly as you described it, and it's, I'm sure he's frustrated. Forward, I know exactly what he's going through right now. Believe me, I never played anywhere else. <laughs> Could not quite keep it in. And we have two more Panther subs, and it is uh, two more re-entering the game as Kevin Muck and Jesse Poljack will check back in. Mike Worthy getting his first rest of the night. Yeah, Joel Hart coming off. Uh, Troy Kiernan has yet to uh, come back into the game after taking that knock early on, and he's on the bench um, in his non-game jersey, so I suspect he's probably done for the evening. Yeah, he's in that position where he doesn't look like he's coming back, which is a, a big loss for the Panthers. Bernhardt's got it. He touches wide. Here's Don Pizzone. Dysert. Let's see if he's going to use his speed up the wing. Canamac does a good job getting numbers back there. I awesome. yeah, yeah, they are working hard. I mean, they are getting numbers back behind the ball. They're keeping the two forwards up top, I mean, by design. Uh, but the guys in the midfield are working hard and getting back, and they're getting uh, – Nine, uh, eight players behind the ball, plus a goalie. Nine players behind the ball as quick as possible. Well, I think, oh, Stephen Mackey running through it. I think one of, the, one of the solutions for that, other than to try to play you know, a little bit quicker from defense to offense, is to use more of the field and to, to play wide. I don't think the Panthers have done as good of a job as they can of using the flanks um, in terms of whether it be the defensive uh, or the, uh, you know, the outside mids to use the flanks and then serve from there. And I think they can do a better job of that. One guy up top, they've got the three midfielders behind them. You're not sure how much leeway the coaches have given of the flank players. It may be a defense first type of thing. Um, so, you know, it may be the tactical game plan for the first half. Uh, and it's something that they may open up uh, in the second half. Well, Ro Robbie Mertz made a nice little quick turn to the outside, which is exactly what we were just talking about. And, uh, he got hit a little bit. Robbie's he's not a big guy, and so it's difficult for him. And I'm sure... There is no way he's coming out here. Oh, no. No way. He's, I, got, he's got a point to prove. That's the first time he's gone down hard. He's going to stay on the field. I, I actually got to play with him a bunch this summer. I'm on an adult team, and we were practicing, and he was over there working on his skills, and he played with us a couple times. He's really tough. Ah, that was a little low. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe he was trying to play it to the feet, but... Yeah, it's about four minutes left in the first half. They're trying to cut it back to the middle a little bit too soon here. I think, oh, that's a nice ball. Good run by Robbie. Good defensive play there. Oh, he got it back. Good work, back Dicer. Hard. Ah, just a miss hit. Yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice run by Robbie, quite frankly, to give an option for the ball. He got dispossessed. Quick thinking by Ethan to pick that ball off the defender's foot to get himself in a position to shoot. No, and I certainly don't mind a strike from there. The one strike we saw from any distance that was, you know, an average strike was, was, was spilled. It was bobbled, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now a little bit of a miscommunication for the Panthers, and the Big Macs are going to try to possess a little bit. Man, that didn't go particularly well, and here come the Panthers again. The possession has not been their style, but you look up on the scoreboard and... And that's the beauty of soccer. You've got to have quality in, in, the, in the final third. Or... Well, it's the beauty of soccer. Unfortunately, it's the frustration of the St. Clair faithful. <laughs> Let's say it, yeah, it absolutely is. It's been there for a lot of years, obviously. It's a nice driven ball in. It's a little too tall. But that's, that's the, you know, everybody seems to think we want to play that high floating ball, but that just gives everybody way too much time. The hard driven ball is the one you can really get on the other end of, and that was a really nice ball from uh, Stephen Mackey. Now, you know, I'd like to see here, um, there's a deep throw, and we should be up on this defensively, okay? Why we are not up on this ball defensively forcing play, I just do not understand. Yeah, I mean, they don't have any numbers forward, so that, that you're not risking anything. You've got to step up and press, 
say we're not showing a desire to step up and press and win the ball in the offensive half. And, uh, you know, you need to do that to these teams that you, you should beat. And keep in mind, we'd be saying that if the score was tied. I mean, it, this, is not, this is not extra sense of urgency because no, you're behind. No, this is just a tactical way of playing. This is going to be a bomb here. here. Boy, couldn't quite get his head on. I think just Erdman mistimed his uh, jump a bit. Dicer tries to touch it middle. Yeah, it was a handle, but Fazone did a really nice job battling. Oh, I like this. Wes is going, ah, couldn't quite touch it through, but Jesse's going to control, touches back. Back to Garrett Blake. He's got some time and some options here. Puts the ball into Wes's feet. And his, his last touch betrayed him. And, ooh, nice little stop and go. There's a nice long ball. Easily handled by Joe Collins. He's going to push forward because uh, time is ticking down. We're almost to a minute remaining in the first half here. Started up again here. Good little run by Mackey showing to the ball. Ooh, I like this. And a little, little long, a little, little, little strong. We did have some numbers there. We certainly had a far post run. There's some numbers up there, too. And, you know, the other thing is, uh, from this vantage point, and, and I'm not on the field, okay, but it looks like Steven's got a direct lane from where he had the ball to the goal, okay? He's fast. He can, he can dribble quickly with the ball. Why not just sprint dribble right towards the goalie? He's got a step to you, and then you've got some options dropping the ball back. <laughs> Okay, you've got to put some pressure on these guys. Oh. Bam. 10, 9, 8, 7. It's like we'll settle out here at the end of the five, first half. 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, end of the first half. We find ourselves down 1 nothing. We're. Winning the possession game, but that doesn't get you much. It definitely does not. I think uh, the one thing the Panthers are going to really have to do is have to figure out how to translate that possession into more dangerous scoring opportunities in the second half. Yeah, Cam and Max definitely fired up here, and uh, they are just beaming with confidence right now. And we're just going to have to come back in the second half and um, take charge. So we'll be back here shortly. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, back for the second half. Again, it's 0 0. Excuse me, 0 0. That's probably just wishful thinking on my part. It is 1 0 Big Mac of our beloved Panthers. And it's going to be fascinating here. We talked about this at the very end of the first half, but it's going to be fascinating to see the adjustments the Panthers make. It's still early in the season. I think they're still trying to figure out the system. It's a different system than they've played the past couple of years and how to you know, attack a defense that is really comfortable getting numbers behind the ball, sitting back and waiting for the Panthers to try to figure out a way to attack you know, nine guys. Yeah, I think at some point in time they'll put two people up top here um, because as long as we watch that quick counter and that ball over the top. Um, I really don't think Ken Max going to have a, a threaten on a buildup. No, I mean, and, and, and score. They only had one one dangerous opportunity all half. Unfortunately, yeah, it ended well, up in the back of the net. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of change here. But uh, yeah, I think we can move two guys up top without uh, sacrificing much defensively. Kind of a nice cheeky little through ball, just a little too much towards the inside. See a Panther throwing. And if that's any indication, Panthers trying to play direct, you know, hard direct through ball early on here. Now we talked during the break. We want to uh, pass some congratulations on to the Lady Panthers. Ball into the box. Good job by Michael sustaining possession there. It wasn't a great center, but I, I, you know, that's what we need to see. Take on some people, make sure they're challenging you. Yeah, the Lady Panthers are rolling, huh? 4-0, and they are, they are not just squeaking by people. No, they they're, they're mowing them down. They're trouncing people, okay, under the tutelage of uh, Dave Gray, the head coach. But um, Lady Panthers look great early on. So uh, check your schedule. Come on out and support the girls when you can. 
see some exciting soccer, and uh, looks like you're going to see a lot of goals. Absolutely. This year. And I think you're going to see a lot of winning from our Panthers soccer teams again this season, so come out. Here come the Panthers trying to counter. Muck plays wide. Good little switch fields here. They're carrying. Blake trying to play a through ball. Nope, couldn't get it. And yeah, I was going to say that ball had crossed the sideline. It will be a Panther throw. Blake's going up the wing. Jesse tried to keep it in. I don't think he did. Was that ball ever in? I guess according to the referee, it was. And that's the only guy whose vote counts. Yeah, I'm not sure, but... Way up in the area to west. Ooh, nice little touch. I'm not sure he meant to, but... Ooh, oh, boy. Couldn't quite get it through. I, it just, again, it was a little bit of a miscommunication. I think he didn't quite read it, but Dysart, uh, you know, expected a, a little bit more of an exterior run. Mackey was running right through the center of the defense looking for maybe a through ball. And... Yeah, I think Stephen was surprised that ball was under, on him hot and under his feet before he knew where it was. Yeah, that's, that's not a good challenge right there. Urban triggers it back in. Mux got it. Going to play a little ball here. Looking for Paul Jack. Can he keep it in? He will not be able to. And uh, I think Kevin had more room than he thought there. He may have wanted to continue carrying the ball. I think the Panthers, as a practice this half, are going to want to go hard and forward until they get some pressure on them and, and you know try to, try to do it that way. Yeah, and that's one way you bring the defense out. Okay, if you're dribbling from the midfield, if you have the space and you're dribbling towards the defender, at some point in time they have got to step out and try to defend you. Okay, and that's one of the ways that you open up the defense. Good pressure there from Stephen Mackey. Stephen obviously has a different opinion. As does as does the bench. <laughs> Yeah, Coach Schwobel was none too pleased with that one, and they got a little clip. So the quick restart here is Worthy. That's what I want to see. Take guys on if they're not pressuring you, and that's going to be a, a, a deep foul. There's a hole by Canamax. And that... And absolutely, he was riding the entire way, but that's what going direct will do if nobody's going to press you and try to take the take ball off you. Well, like this. Mm. Oh, is that dangerous? I think it's a corner. Uh, it, it was just, just flicked. I mean, there was a guy running on. I couldn't tell who it was. I think it was Erdman. Uh, and then the Cannon Mac defender just flicked it just at the last second. But that was a dangerous, hard driven ball. Great that's stuff from Burdett. Yeah, that's a good, good service by Burdett. We win a corner out of it. So who do we got her taking? Can we tell? Is that Dysert? Looks like Dysert. Ball's mm. out there on the box. Boy, they got to be more aggressive on that. That was a nice ball. There were two Panthers there. Not sure whether it was a miscommunication, but they were not aggressive with their head. Exactly what you're talking about. It's, you know, the hopeful ball one on four. You got to press numbers forward because, you know, their counter is not dangerous at this point. I like that ball. Trying to play wide. Jesse's uh, running on. Oh, good job by Jesse. Can he keep it in? He can. Nobody home. I say Jesse's healthy. That's a good run. Really good run. Aggressive. He got a good piece of the cross. The Panthers have got to keep some of their forwards a little bit higher. Uh, they are getting sucked back, but there's no real reason. Cannon Max not pushing quantity of numbers forward, even on their counterattack. There's no reason for the Panther forwards to you know, be any further back than on sides. Yeah, no, none whatsoever, and we're still playing with uh, one guy up top. And um, I'd like to see, I'd like to see the coaches move to two players up top here. I mean, I'm not a fan of playing one guy up top ever, unless he's a really dynamic holding guy who can play with his back to goal. But yeah, and and again, I mean, Stevens, uh, Stevens, one of the best players, if not arguably the best player we have on the on the team. Uh, but it's not like he's been playing as a target forward for his life. No, and that's uh, difficult. And it's so a it's, difficult it's, spot. It's difficult, and it, it becomes more difficult when you're not getting the support out of the midfield. S spilled out of the middle here. Here, They're flying forwards, Hayden Bernhardt. Couldn't quite get it to Mackey. Ooh, a little chip. 
All right, Pizone controls. Can the Panthers get it going here on the counter? Here's Mike Worthy. Oh, pops it over him. Very nice. Possesses with Yeah, that's nice. Touch by Michael. Let's control it. Yeah, we've got to put him under and let's win this ball down deep. Okay, Good. Now, right here, we should just be... All right, now get numbers forward here because Garrett Blake is going to throw it into the box and it's going to be dangerous. We've got basically nobody in the box in that situation. Yeah, now Wes is going forward. I would not waste my time with the guys that we have throwing the ball and doing some cheeky little 10 yard throw. No, I agree. Not with, the, not with these guys. <laughs> We've got a quarter kick here. So it's going to be Ethan Dysart once again to trigger it in from the corner. It's low. Mock does a good job coming up and winning it. What's he going to try to do? He turns, gets dispossessed, and it's cleared away. No, like I said, they are, earlier at least they were going to, you know, kind of at least feign like they were going to go hard on the counter. Now that they've got a one nothing lead, they're not even faking like they're going to try to counter. It's going to be one guy high and that's all. Ball's going to roll over the end line. Yeah, Mike kept it in. Got those long legs and stretched, them, stretched around. Good little touch. Here's Erdman. Huge. Nice strike. Ooh, very nice. He did. Nice, nice touch to put himself in the space. Yeah, his yeah. first touch by the defender was beautiful. Yep, took the ball at speed, pushed in the space, and got a nice shot off. Textbook foul. Yeah, absolutely. Coming out. The refs have done a nice job here tonight. I'm usually not a big fan. <laughs> Who is? I'll, I'll keep it, I'll keep it polite. No, I think they've been fine tonight. Supporter of the uh, of the referees, okay, but I think the refs have done an excellent job tonight, quite frankly. Well, I, the, the, my my biggest problem usually is the way they call the games not conducive to get a good free flowing skilled soccer match, and and you really have seen it. They've called what needed to be called tonight to keep it, uh, you know, a clean and not chippy game. Right. Here's Matt Kiernan checking back into the game. Yeah. Jonathan Urban stepping off. Not before he had the most dangerous scoring opportunity of the second half. And the Panthers a little bit out of control on the challenge there, and they will get a foul called, and Cannon Mack will uh, have a free kick here. Unsurprisingly, they try to go direct long to their one target player, and it'll result in a Panther throw. Oh boy. Another textbook foul. Yeah, Dom. Dom didn't even break. Dom didn't even break stride. He just he knew he fell and he just kept running. Thank you very much. So the Panthers got to be a little bit frustrated here, trying to solve this puzzle of this many guys back. About thirty minutes remaining in the contest. Well, the one thing it does is tell you to start games better. <laughs> you don't want to get behind it, you know, get behind the eight ball and allow them to do this anyway. But that being said, uh, they're going to have to get better against this sort of system anyway. They're going to see it. Nice little flick. Panthers clear and still not quite out. Yeah, the other thing I think we're struggling with a little bit tonight is we have had a number of balls. Um, a little hard challenge by Mackey. Oh, boy, they are furious. That's a nice ball. This could be a corner if it goes. It should be a corner, and it will be. that I was going to say was there's been a, an inordinate number for us, okay, balls, in my opinion, this evening, uh, of passes that we just haven't connected that we put to the other team, okay? Uh, and so maybe we're just off a little, you know, off a little bit tonight. Um, and maybe we can tighten that up here in the last uh, uh, 28, 29 minutes. Yeah, I mean, unforced, unforced turnovers in the midfield are another thing that hurts your... And that's exactly, you're right, it's unforced. Okay, there's been a number of unforced turnovers uh, where we've uh, been uh, 
we've just given the ball up, uh, and we haven't been under any pressure whatsoever. So March tried to hit Muck there on a near post run on the corner, kind of a, not a real dangerous attack there. I'd like him to go a little bit deeper into the box there, um, probably close to the far post if you can. There were more Panther numbers there, but be another uh, Big Mac goal kick. They, they haven't been dangerous enough on corners and set pieces either, which is a little frustrating, I'm sure, because that, that's great opportunities in games where teams are getting numbers back. Mackie with a little flick. It's loose. They're going to get Dicer. Panthers got to be careful not to get frustrated and get caught up in some of the uh, physical stuff especially on you know, the 50-50 balls and some of the challenges deep in Cannon Max end because Cannon Max defenders have looked shaky. Um, you know, you got to let the play continue. They can spill one and you get a real good opportunity. Yeah, I think look, you know, look for the play to continue. The other thing is that, you know, when we do have two guys up there, one guy can go and play the ball. The other guy's got to play the miss. I think there's been a number of balls that have been squeaking through here and we just haven't been playing the miss. Again, I mean, it... it, it Although Canamac did, they, they tried to play wide there in a little bit, but again, there's no, no numbers forward. Two, possibly three guys total. Blake does a nice job here. Here comes Mertz. Ah, that's unfortunate. Good job by Matt Kiernan stepping up. This is Worthy trying to settle it. He will. He has Robbie Mertz, who has some space here up the right wing. Checks back a little bit. He's going to see if he can't go one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to play through his, through his legs, I think, to Mackey. Again, see, they're not connecting even on simple balls in the midfield. But just like we talked about, it's the turnovers there, turning it right back over to Cannon McMillan. Going to try to play direct one-on-three again. Conlon off his line, no problem. Yeah, and that's a good job by Joe. Okay, he knows those balls are coming long. He's got to come off his line there, pick those up, and uh, quickly outlets it to, uh, to Robbie. Mackey challenges and forces a turnover. Worthy plays it to center. Nobody home, but it, oh, jeez. We can't even take advantage of some of these turnovers. I mean, the Canamac back line's not even trying to possess it. They're just trying to get it out of there, and you're seeing mistakes now. Let me tell you something. This is looking pretty darn sloppy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but it is. Because Canamac it is looking sloppy. Yeah, I mean the back backline's not even trying to possess it and create something. They're just trying to get it out of there, which is a surefire sign of we're not real confident in our one goal lead. So the Panthers have got to really I think they gotta get numbers high and pressure the heck out of Canamac's defense, try to force turnovers late. Robbie with a ton of space here. Let's see what he can do. Oh, that's nice. Boy, it didn't connect, but that's exactly what uh, you need. The thought's there. It's just execution. It's just execution. The thinking's there. You just got to get it done. Now, this is Mertz again. He's going to try to beat the defender to the outside. Can't, can't quite do it, but again, it spilled right back to Blake. This is Worthy. Now to Muck. A little stop and go. Robbie, ooh, nice give and go. This is worthy. Going to try to beat him wide. And he draws, draws a corner. Yeah, good little ball movement there in the final third. Yeah, I mean, the passing was tight in space. And, again, Mike got a turn, got a little space, and tried to go one-on-one. Yeah, -on -one. Put yeah, put the defender under some pressure there. Take somebody on. Here's Robbie Mertz. See if we can get a dangerous, uh, dangerous one here, maybe far post style. It's loose. Oh. It's down. Oh, oh boy. It was well struck, but... Yeah, that was a nice driven ball by uh, Robbie. Good job by uh, Hayden Bernhardt to coming yeah, up and keeping it. Hayden stepping up well there defensively. That was... Um, not sure, but we'll take it. Yeah, I wasn't either. He tried to do a little stop and go get around him. I thought uh, it was pretty good defending. Yeah. With his physical and some of the challenges have been, that's, that was soft. Yep. That was soft. And we got a car for descent. I don't blame him, frankly, there. I, again, I, I didn't think that was, uh, you know, just by what has been called so far, I didn't really think that was a foul. It was a soft foul. 
But he will uh, have to go have a, a, a small seat, and that is one of Ken and Mac's most dangerous guys, the guy in the fluorescent yellow boots. you got to admire the footwear. Uh, if you, if you, you better be good to wear those. And there was an article in the, in the paper maybe a week, two weeks ago that was talking about the, uh, the footwear that the kids wear today, how colorful, stylish, chic, some may say. <laughs> I always tried to wear the most... And not, you know, the most benign, I just wanted to blend in. If I stood out, that was meant I was getting attention. Oh, that's a beauty. It's down. Oh, my, Mackie put it exactly where he wanted to get a teammate running on. It's headed down. Oh, struck right into the defense. Boy, had just somebody been running off of Stephen Mackey, it looked like we were frozen. I think that uh, Matthew Keener in there with uh, a hard shot, I think that's the second one Matthew's had in about two minutes where he has just flat out hammered balls. That's right. Kept them low, but... Uh, been a, a big Mac in the way. It was a nice ball by Wes on the uh, free kick, and, and Stephen Mackey did exactly what you want to do from that angle. Head it back towards the middle, but you got to get numbers Somebody's running off. Yeah, Somebody's got to run off of the, run on those balls and just be aggressive. Balls played low. Nothing called. There's a lot of space here. He, he has as much space as he wants here, does Garrett Blake. Just carry that ball up, Garrett. Let's not lose it. Karen, very nice. This is uh, Mertz trying to play low. Could not do so. Look at that. A booming ball out of the back by the big man. Yeah, again, that's what we're seeing. Just playing kickball. Now i got to try to switch fields again. See if you can't get wide here. Nah, see, I would have liked to play the ball wide there. Well, let's bring the ball back and just kind of regroup. About 22 minutes left in the contest this evening. Still one nothing, big man. Oh, boy. And that's one of those unforced errors that we talked about earlier. Just, just, a, just a few too many of those. They're not getting pressured, so you got to attack. Keep going. Burdett, that's what we like to see. Draw the defender, then go. Mock's got some space here. Let's see if he goes at him. He will. He gets a half a step. I would have liked to see that. I don't mind that at all. That guy had to get support to stop that run. Mertz steps in. Bazone trying to play a little chip ball. Again, he had, there was nobody pressuring him. He didn't need to give up that ball. Oh, here we go. It's a mistake. They're battling. Yep. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't on Mike. Mike won the ball, and so he was frustrated. He was thinking, oh, I didn't do anything. Well, he didn't. But, yeah, they were waiting to see if uh, St. Clair was going to get an advantage. And they did. I'll give Ken and Mac credit here. They were just. They are playing tough, they're feisty, they're challenging for everything. They know what they have in front of them, and they're doing what they need to do to get nope. the lead so far. That's called tactical football. I mean, it's just, it, I'm sure it's frustrating for the Panthers. I like this ball, though. Good switch fields. Ethan Dysert has it. Good hit by Ethan. Oh, very nice. You know, that whole thing started by Ethan coming from a deep position. Okay, we could see the run that he was making up here. Don't recall who put it over top for him, but he saw it too. Quick move by Ethan, he gets off a good shot. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that he turned and went to rack. Worthy played a good ball to the outside to him, and um, now we got a couple subs in. They're going to give Stephen Mackey and Matt Kiernan a little bit of a blow here late, and we got Pole Jack back in here, and we also have Joel Hart. Boy, Wes <laughs> ran wildly onto that one, couldn't quite get there. Here's Hart again. A little bit of a late challenge, but he does play it forward. And again, pressure on those defense. That's what we need. I would have waited for Garrett to come wait. up. I mean, you got to wait. You got a kid that can throw the ball into the box from there. Why are we rushing? I don't know. It's not like, I mean, they have so many numbers back, you're not going to catch him sleeping. This is Mertz. Oh, I like it. Boy, he's, it, they had a lot of numbers back, unfortunately, but that ball in a normal situation is a beauty. Here's Mertz. He's going to rip it. 
Couldn't quite get a whole lot on it. And goes harmlessly to the keeper as we're halfway through the second half here. Still a one nothing lead by the Big Macs. They scored early, you know, about nine minutes into the game. And, uh, and it's, it's held up. On. And they are hanging on. About 19 and a half left. Got Worthy on a run here. Does a nice job to turn it and keep it in play. I like that ball. Here we go. Muck's got some space. Simple touch here outside. Joe Hart. This is what they need. Wide run. Use the field. Worthy's battling. He still has it. position, do exactly what he did there, try to beat the defender on the dribble there. He's got some skills, he's got good pace. I mean, you've got, you've got the whole field, there's a reason. Use that width. All right, and just like that, Ethan, it wasn't even a good touch from Ethan there, but because he has speed and he used the flank, he got a throw in. Now Wes has some space here. Worthy wants it. That's where he's going. It's flicked on. That's a beauty. Oh, boy. How Jet many times have we not run through on you balls or we're delayed? We're waiting to see where it's going as opposed to having some faith in the forward receiving the ball and we're just going to lay it off. And the frustrating thing about that is it's not because it, there's not an offside position with which to speak of. You've got to run. And, and that's the second in a couple minutes where we've seen where one simple flick from the target guy and you may have a goal. And we'll get, we'll get better at that. We'll get better at that. You know, coaches will point that out to them, and um, we'll get better at it. Jesse holds it up nicely, doing a good job with his back to goal. Now playing wide. Hart keeps it in. Playing back to the middle. Mertz trying to do a give and go with Jesse. I would have liked to kept it a little wider there, but again, it's, it's, it's that, it's that same thing. Yeah, the, the, I think the forwards, the guys up front have to be a little more proactive on their runs. Start runs. It shouldn't take a ball to be played to, right. to start your runs. Coming up on about 17 minutes left in the game here. That's a nice ball. Jesse's battling. A little bit of a discard. Didn't get a call. Well done, Jesse. Oh, boy, Mike was in a little deep. Yeah, they got Ethan. He unfortunately, I, I like the aggression. He extended with his left arm, and that was what was called. It was a shame. I think it was more a, a product of his just his jump. Cannon back and absolutely no rush. Okay. Who got a yellow? Ethan got a, a yellow for descent. So he's going to have to come off here, and John Gertunka will return for the Panthers. I'm sure Ethan was frustrated because he made a good run and he, he was really assertive in what he was doing. But sometimes that happens when you go to jump, your arm, you know, your front arm extends. It certainly was not anything intentional. For your listening pleasure this evening. We, we like to have classical music up here just to, um, you know, to pass the time when we have some dead ball situations. It's a nice strike on the goal kick. So we got a, uh, looks like a foul. No, it, it was just a, I, th I, thought, I thought they were actually going to call a foul, but it looks like it's uh, going to be a throw instead. No, it is. Okay. I, I was going to say he called something. Here we go. The Big Mac's actually getting a couple guys forward. Let's see if the Panthers can't catch him on a counter. Well, now you got to counter. Ah, oh, no. I liked the effort from Jesse, but he couldn't quite keep it in. And yeah, can can and Max doing whatever they can to waste time here, switching guys, substituting, and Rivera for the uh, Big Max here on a throw-in. I was a century player, played for a U16 team next year. Been in the whole game here for the Big Mac. Yeah, I would expect to see. 
see a substitution pretty much on every stoppage of play by the Big Mac at this point in time. Absolutely. Sure, a lot of confusion on their end as far as who should take the throw in, who should take the free kick. Somebody may have to tie a shoe prior to taking a kick. That's what they call gamesmanship. Tactics, if you will. Nice job by Stephen Mackey. Really asserting himself as he comes back into the game for Worthy. All right, now let's be a little more direct here. Now, again, just can't quite. No, they're going to play the advantage. Good job by the referee. Yeah, I mean, it was a foul, but. Yeah, it was a foul, but both players handled it, handled it well. Kevin Mack guy got up, and the referee just said play on. There wasn't really any reason to bang it there. They did. Kennemack possesses. Good step by Pizone. Not really able to bring anything out of it, and the Big Macs possess. The Panthers do, are going with the uh, two forwards high at this point. Um, they have pole jacket, looks like, uh, along with Mackey. It's loose in the box. Blake gets a good left foot on it and out of danger. So, tactically, they change up with about 14 minutes left in the game. Oh, nice little touch. Can they keep it in? Nah, couldn't quite do it. The idea was was the right one from Joel Hart, but uh, and exactly what you said, they're going to have their sweeper come up and take every single throw in from this point. So Jonathan Erdman and uh, Matthew Kiernan getting ready to check in for the Panthers. Hart touches. Here's Mertz. And again, couldn't quite slide it past. And that's going to be a foul. Nobody from Kennebec wants to take that? Not quickly, anyway. Yeah, bunch of shy guys on that team. <laughs> and you aren't likely to see a booking for that, not at this level. Unless it gets just ridiculous. Worth asking the referee where he wants the ball exactly. Loosen the box again. This is Hayden Bernhardt, the freshman. Good job. one thing uh, the freshman will need to work on just as far as distribution a few too many unforced errors here yeah out of the back uh, you're right today uh, extremely strong defensively and that's why, that's why yeah it's starting. definitely that's why he's playing the whole game here uh, just needs to get a little bit better on his distribution out of the back quick restart it's in let's loose in the middle there we have it there is our equalizer Joel Hart over top to the now healthy Jesse Poljack Panther goal scored by Jesse Poljack off an assist by Joel Hart. Boy, was that beautiful. And just like that, that wasn't the best buildup you saw, but you saw two things. First of all, the quick restart. Stephen Mackey was fouled, and, and the Cannon Mack players were still sort of debating the foul call. Mackey just said, I'm not even worried about that, and played a nice little lobbing ball into the box. Second thing was Joel Hart, his effort to get to that ball, he never gave up, even as it looks like it was crossing the line. He, he crossed it back across, and a nice, aggressive, long corner post Far post run by Jesse Poljak, heading it home, and we are tied with 12.38 left. Probably helped that we went to those two forwards. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just, I just think that system's too difficult to play for, for, for this group. I really believe it is. Um, you know, unless you're going to be a lot more aggressive running your next three off of him. And exactly. So let's see. I think you're going to keep this formation. I mean, if you're the Panthers right now, you've dominated. You're not satisfied with 1-1 here. You just aren't. Yeah, and then, yeah, you try to get them while they're still sort of, if there was some controversy, they were complaining, what, maybe, I don't know if he's been offside's position or what. Blake didn't really need to be that, that direct. Now Cannon Mack's going to try to carry and press some guys forward. I do like their aggression. They, they've not, uh, they've had some, they've been spirited tonight. I'll give them that. Yeah, just a really great effort. Panthers look like they're still sort of keeping that uh, aggressive mode. The two forwards are really staying forward. Um, you know, that was something we criticized them for in the first half. Nice little move by Worthy. You know, we're playing with, two, with the two up top. Okay, I'd like Steven up probably another 15 or 20 yards on the last defender. You know, there's no reason why he's going to check back. I agree. On there. As long as you're on the last defender, they're giving you the 15 yards or so. Yeah, as, lo as long as you're in an onside position, I, there ought to be one striker up pushing on a team against a team like this. Steven gets the ball 1v1 up there. 
I like Stevens' Kansas. <laughs> I, de I definitely do. So this is going to be interesting. Cannon Mac looks like they're pushing a, uh, more numbers than usual in the box if they're going to get a deep throw. That was not even a legal throw. Oh, you just cannot let the ball loose like that. Cannon Mac player falls down after being blown on, raises his hand. Boy, you, you can't – they are really – the one area I think they need to improve on in the back line because the back line's been good is on those 50-50 you know, balls in the box, a little more assertive. And here's what you talked about. Well done defensively. The ball was a little too – little out in front of Steven. He didn't really have as good a control as he'd like to take the defender on 1v1, but the defender does. I think the arrows there for the big max does a nice job stepping in and winning that ball off the senior. Yeah, I think his first touch was a, just got away from him a little bit. That's all. Blake's going deep. Oh, and this is a beauty. It's loose. Oh, boy, Mike Worthy. I'll bet Mike had no idea he was as clear as he was on that head. It looked like two St. Clair guys, and he couldn't quite get on it because Mike's probably the best, the closest thing we have to a target guy at this point. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's nice to see. We had a couple of guys around the ball there that time. But, uh, again, you know, we've got the long throw in. Why would you do anything other than that? in that position. That's a, that, that Mike did a nice job winning that. Didn't quite run off him like you'd like to see. Playing to the corner flag. Boy, this is going to... No, nah, it isn't going to stay in, but... Just under 10 here. 1-1. One, one. And once again, it looks like I'm not going to get to bed on time perhaps. <laughs> it's headed out of bounds. Last time we were here, we had overtime with Kiske. Don't these guys know I need my beauty sleep? I'm not as worried about it sleep. Not that it works. I'm not as worried about sleep right now as I am. I got to go get dinner at my mom's, and I'm hoping she won't go to sleep because there's nothing like my mom's cooking. I hope you're watching, Mom. <laughs> Mac, you trying to turn? He does get it through. Oh, that's, that's, oh, boy, he couldn't quite connect. That's exactly the ball we need to play. Nice little touch by Dysert. Waited a little too long to get rid of that ball. Yeah, that's one of those things. Um, Actually, that was Matt Kiernan too, Dysert. I take that back. No, I, was, I think Gertunka out on the far side. But, oh, is that John Gertunka? Yeah, and, and as he takes that shot, there's absolutely no feigning in one way or the other. Very, very easy for the defender to, read. to defend. Garrett Blake coming up. Matt does a nice job getting that ball. Little handball. It definitely was. See the advantage. I, and I'll be the first to admit, I used to know what a handball was, but after I watched officials call it and not call it. Uh, it's one of those rules that's enforced so handling, differently. Call it handling of the ball, I believe is what they say. I'll be the first to admit, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> oh, look at this. Got a little guy who's running on. Bernhardt out of danger. Just under eight minutes left in the game. Regulation at least, it's 1-1. One, one. That's a nice challenge. He was right on the ball. That is a wonderful tackle. The referee's right there. Absolutely no foul whatsoever. No, and the Cannon Mac bench didn't say a word. They knew. Absolutely. That ball's played way up in the air. This is Pole Jack shielding nicely, using his basketball skills, blocking out. Here comes. It's wide open on the backside. Please get him the ball. They got it. Oh, he touched it. Beautiful touch. Oh, Mackey with his left almost had it. Boy, was that a great little possession. Matt Kiernan was wide open. He was making that, that run at a 45-degree angle to the far post. And I like what he did there. Instead of saying, okay, this is a little bit of a tough angle, I'm going to touch it back to our number one guy. And Stephen Mackey with a great opportunity left foot. We're st Stop there, the clock. Cough stopping the clock. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm wondering, uh, I thought you were looking. Oh, what, what, why are they stopping it? I think there's an injury here. Kid right here is injured. Yeah, that was a nice, that was a nice play. The Cannon Mack defense completely forgot Matt Kiernan, and he just kind of found his way back behind the defender. Nice little through ball. Matt lays it back into the middle of the field to Mackey. 
In terms of playing the possession game with a buildup, that what you just saw is exactly what you like to see. That was probably the best example we've seen of taking it from the midfield into an actual dangerous attack. And I loved the layoff by Kiernan. He could have gone right at goal. He might have been able to carry it even, but boy, he had Stephen Mackey right in the middle. Play, play the way he was facing, and uh, Mackey was right there. And that's getting ball to feet in the final third and creating a good scoring opportunity. No, when you give it to your best guy right in the middle of the field in terms of finishing, that, that's what you want. Those are the opportunities you live for. Going to play wide, but right back to the Panthers. Here's Garrett Blake, who's been pretty impressive tonight, especially for a ninth grader. His distribution will get better, I'm sure, as he gets a little more experience. But as a ninth grader, I like his poise a lot, and I like his aggression. Worthy punnel through ball. Nice run by, is that Don Pizzone all the way up? Yeah, and he, he, that was good anticipation. He left a little early, uh, as he should, you know, for that, for that ball there. So he's, he's thinking a step ahead there. Coming up on a six-minute mark here in the second half. Bernhardt steps up again and wins it. Poljack has it. He's going to go a little more direct. Mackey trying to flick on. <laughs> Worthy runs through it. Panthers have got to control it here a little bit. This is nice. Oh, boy, nice little back heel. Very nice by Ethan Dysert. We're going to look for the center. Worthy's got a little space here. Oh, he couldn't chest it down. Boy, was that a little beautiful sequence on the side there between uh, yeah. Don Pizzone and Ethan Dysert. Nice little cheeky pass to uh, Kenny Mack defenders. Can Mackey keep it? He will. Taking it to the corner flag. Trying to win a corner, but uh, can a Mack defender change his body? That's probably a foul. No, not a foul, but... Matt, Matt Kieran, an aggressive uh, challenge. Kieran has absolutely no problem putting his body into the, into the play. God bless him. No problem. You, you need that. Well, hey, we don't have any McCurries left, so we, we need somebody like that. I think there's one, one McCurry left in the household, Katie McCurry, but uh, two years before she hits the high school team. I'll bet she'll be super active and physical, especially growing up in that house. To be honest with you, I don't even know who Katie plays. <laughs> I think she swims. <laughs> but I think she's uh, setting her own path in the McCurry household. That was just like when Allie Lee was here for the girls' soccer team. I, I knew she had to be tough. And growing up in that house, I knew there was no other choice. All right, Burdett, the last time he had in this situation, put in a really nice ball. He's going to play a chip. It's dangerous. Oh, it's flicked. Oh, he had to hit it over the bar. He parried it over the bar. That's a corner. Yeah, good save by the keeper. Excellent service by West. And once again, it's the difference between lofting a ball and driving a ball. And the thing with those driven balls, it's a simple flick. You really don't have to get any power on it. It's a simple flick. I don't even know who got their head on that, but boy, that was a beautiful. Worthy, but yeah, it probably is. Here he is again. There's Mike again. It's loose. It's still loose. Oh, somebody got tackled. Somebody gets absolutely taken down. It was Dom Pazone. Man, did he get tackled. Because Worthy won it with his head and flicked it forward, and Pazone was right there. On the other hand, Oh, was... great turn by Mackey. From this distance, maybe he just fell down. I don't know. That Boy, should not be a foul. No, he I mean, he played the ball. Right. The kid slid right over his legs. I'm not really sure why. And Steven's going to get one to descent. That's not unusual. I'm not really sure why that was a foul on Steven to begin with. That's one of those where the referee sees a guy fall hard and says, oh, that must be a foul. But no, I don't, I don't think so. And, you know, Steven's rightfully disappointed, but at this stage of the game, we need Steven on the field. We do. Steven on the bench. Yellow. Yellow. So he'll have to sit out for a few minutes here. Yeah, it's one thing Steven's battled, you know, and, and all the Mackeys are like it. The Mackeys are com fiercely competitive, and unfortunately sometimes that involves uh, getting the lip. Battling her. Oh my God, he yanked. <laughs> That's just not smart because the referee was standing five feet from it. Yanking Kevin Mock's arm. Wes is going long. See if we can't flick this. No, it just gets through. Dysert has it. Well, we talked early on about playing the miss. Well, yeah, as many balls as they've not stepped up and gotten, exactly. you may be better off 
you know, playing no, at that time. One guy's going to play the minutes, or if you can't even put a good challenge on it, play the minutes. Trying to play a through ball. Good job by Joe. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. No, no they called it. Cannon Mack obviously is outraged because they're, what they're going to say is the goalkeeper had absolutely no possession on the ball. Even though he was around it, it was, it was bobbling. The player should have just as much right to go to the ball. But he did take Joe out as he went for the ball, and that's where the... That's where the ref just has to call it. I will say this. That is consistently called at this level where the goalkeeper gets every benefit of the doubt with any contact on him. So that's not unusual. Except it, when we play Peter. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to talk about the Scott Matthews that's goal. Really becomes permissible, right? I actually saw a video of that slowed down several times because Matt Mellinger, our athletic director, we didn't know how to respond to that because we thought it was so egregious and we thought it may have been intentional. And it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Intentional? It's bad. A Peter Claire going hard at the goal? <laughs> it's really bad. And it's it, it, the thing is, you want to always be careful about talking about stuff in slow motion. Because slow motion can sometimes make it look worse than it, already, than it is. But it looked really bad. That was bad at any speed. Yes. All right. So back to, back to the future. About a minute and a half left in this game. For that again going long. Mock heads it down. Mike with the, what they like to call the professional foul. Canamac is pushing people forward. I like their attitude right now. They're, they're pushing they, people forward. They, you know, they, they weathered the storm, and now uh, they're looking for the goal. And I feel like they have some momentum, and I think they may be right. Jesse does a really fine job defending there. Now that's turned. Common plays a short hop. Let's see if they try to go forward here real quick. Good job by Viveris over there. Get that ball in on net. Yeah, he did. It was a really nice turn. Dom does a nice job. He's just getting just absolutely abused. Going to call that a push from behind. 25 seconds left. Seconds here. Problem is now they waited until the St. Clair sort of won that. All right, Wes. Absolutely. They've had two really dangerous opportunities uh, on this. Uh-oh, that's a little... F oh, my. Oh, my God! It is in! Wes Burdett, the goalie, came out to challenge as if it was going to be a set piece and it went over his head into the... Of Chris Burke's yeah, I was just going to say that. Wes Burdett. First round, what, four years ago? I was this? just going to say that. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, I feel very bad for the Cannon Mac goalkeeper. I really do because, I don't know, for a lot of reasons. One, that's a really difficult way to lose. But, pro right yeah, I think the coach got a red card. He's out on the field. But, I don't exactly know. I cannot believe that just happened. So much to... There's so much to talk about because it, right when the ball was hit, we, you, could, you could see, oh, boy, that's long. That, that's not going to be where you want it to be because West took a, a fuller swing. And then, as you saw at sail, the goalie came out as if he wanted to punch it like it would be challenging on a, on a set piece. And it <laughs> went over his head into the top left-hand corner of the net. Well, there's four seconds left in the game. West for dead is exasperated for some reason. We just didn't see it. So difficult for us to speculate at this point in time. Yeah, I don't know what the contra. I'm, maybe they're still mad about the, the the disallowed goal on the other end. I could see that, but in terms of, I don't know. Is who all right? Yeah, he looks. He physically looks fine. Um, Again, just not sure what materialized afterwards. The ball went into the net. Uh, Wes takes off on the sprint celebrating. Um, not necessarily, sh just don't know what, what's happened. Well, hopefully he's not the one who got the red card. I think he is. Wonder why he would have gotten a red card. Why he got the red card? If you go back and if you play it. Well, he's going to be really upset because he missed his next game. Um, 
most likely anyway. And, and you know, if you know anything about Wes, it, it's what? I don't know what that, there's something obviously happened. We, we clearly did not see it, and I'll be interested to talk to those guys. Know. I mean, I don't know if it's for taking off, taking off the shirt, if he said something, if, if somebody pushed at him. I, I, I just, I don't know. Just don't know. Uh, I feel, I feel bad for what. I mean, he looks flat out distraught, so, uh, but uh, just, just don't know what happened at this point in time. No, and I coached Wes for years in basketball, and Wes is really, really extremely hard on himself, maybe as hard on himself as any kid I've ever coached. And I would hate for this, you know, spectacular moment for him to be kind of taken away by something like that. What, what's, the next, what's our next game? What, 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 assuming it is a red card, what, what, what is he missing? Take a look here at the schedule, and it looks like we are playing oh, Bethel Park on Saturday at Bethel Park. Well, that's a section game, but it's a, you know it's a rivalry game. That's probably why he's frustrating. That's one that, that that's one you want to play. Uh, you know the Bethel Parks, the Chartiers Valleys, and the Mount Lebanons, and of course Peters Township. Those are the games you want to play. So there's still four seconds here. The Panthers are up two to one. No, I mean the goal's in. No. So the goal stands. And I think that's probably, at the end of the day, all Coach Snyder cares about is, gentlemen, the goal stands. We'll kick off from there. I'm going to be so curious to talk to the, the uh, to Coach Schwobel and uh, some of the guys afterwards and figure out exactly what's going on right now because I can't even speculate. Wes looks relatively happy there. It looks like he just got a get out of jail free card. Maybe he got either changed to a yellow or or it's a. So Do they still have the concept of a soft red? Or perhaps they're pointing to somebody else. But uh, Wes looks completely and utterly relieved <laughs> at this point in time. Is this bizarre? This is, this is really bizarre. I've been watching this game for 30 years. <laughs> I mean, I have never, I, uh, I mean, to chalk down the list of things I've never seen, I've never seen a, I've never seen a buzzer beater from thir 35 on the football field. I've never seen that. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen uh, a set piece, although the Chris Burke one is a perfect, perfect analogy. It's exactly, it was the it first thing I thought of. Him. It is. It's it the is first thing I thought of. Because just as Wes was surprised that this, Pass actually found its way into the net. The only guy who was more surprised than West, Ber than West Burdett tonight and Chris Burke back then were the opposing goalkeepers. <laughs> well, apparently they... That's who was more surprised. Well, the thing is you never expect it to be direct on cage there. You're always expecting to kind of have to be reacting to who's ever getting their head on it or you might want to go out and punch, come off your line. And to have that happen is just... That's a goalie's worst nightmare. I'm going to definitely text Chris the mailman Burke tonight and... Let him know he is no, no longer solo in that. We were thinking about him. We still want to only have 10 white guys out here. What, you got a red? If it's a red, we should... Oh, no. Nope. It's not a red then. So it's probably just a probably yellow. just a yellow, which is why Wes was so happy. We have 11 players on the field, which means nobody got a red. And someone will have to explain to me the soft red concept. I don't even think it exists time. anymore, does it? <laughs> it's an urban legend, okay? I mean, it's something like Mikey ate Pop Rocks and died. <laughs> I mean, this case of a soft red, okay? I, you know, materialized in somebody's head about 3.15 in the morning somewhere, this soft red concept. And now it's just pervasive through Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, I've never actually seen it, but I think it's one of those things that uh, the last time I, we were discussing it, I, was, I think I was discussing it with Doug Dilley, and, and our conclusion was it doesn't exist now if it ever did. <laughs> okay, John, I'm impressed that the referees fixed it, though. They, they could have they been hard-headed and just said this is the way it is, we called it. Well, we've actually been giving the referees some credit through the course of the night. I think they've so been good. I really do. They handled this very well also. So what exactly now is going on? Well, we still have four seconds left in the game, according to the timekeeper. 
So, oh, I think the red card was, was Canamac's coach, and they're telling him to get off the sideline. I think now, and our, our, our athletic director is, uh, our assistant athletic director, Joe Graceffo, is escorting the Cannon McMillan coach well, off of the premises. That's Dave, that's Greg. Oh, is that Dave Gregg? Yeah. I, t- I coach, take it back. Coach Larry Fingers and uh, Coach Gray of the girls' team. I know both, both Larry and Dave coach at Century, so they're probably just talking about some century things <laughs> yeah i can i cannot wait to hear the the post game from uh all all parties involved all parties involved and uh, i'll make sure i, I uh, go to my can of mac contacts uh, including larry fingers and find out exactly what yeah yeah what Co- happened there. coach davis you don't have to do this on the record but i want to hear off the record uh <laughs> coach's Three, take on that two one that's pretty impressive. That was a nice shot there on goal, and it ends. Upper St. Clair, two, the Big Mac of Cannonback, one. That is that is the best soccer play I've ever seen. Gavin, it's been a pleasure. It has been. I am looking forward to more of these, although it's not good for my heart to end it like that. And as we end every Panther game this year, good night, Gracie.